right, well, good morning, Bethel Church. You have no idea what you are in store f- today. We have um, an amazing couple here in the front row, um, great friends, some of the, probably one of the most talented couples I know, okay? Um, Pastor James and Debbie Lowe, um, they're amazing. They're our lead pastors in Brentwood, Tennessee. Um, God uses them around the world. They both can preach. They both can sing. He, she's got a little edge on you on the singing. Um, and she might in the preaching too. So I don't know. But, but we get James and hopefully he'll do both for us today. But, um, you know, Debbie doesn't um, need to be explained, but her husband does. And, uh, and, and so everybody online, you better be sitting down because when he gets up here, man, uh, you're going to, you may be falling down. Okay. It, it, you're going to have an amazing experience because more than what he teaches and he can teach is what he's going to impart today, what he's going to impart to us and, um, love him. Their, their three sons. I've stayed in their home Debbie's an amazing host, and, uh, and so um, we're all about family, and uh, we're all about relationship, and uh, that's what uh, you're going to hear even today is um, over a decade of relationship for us. I mean, well over a decade. Well, I mean, maybe almost 20 years, and, um, and so, but this is his first time on a Sunday morning uh, uh, being with us. So um, as long as you do what I know you'll do, this won't be his last, okay? This won't be his last. So we put together a little video like we do for many of our guests. And after the video, um, I know you already know what to do. If you're watching online, get up on your feet for just a moment and give a shout out, honor, because when we honor, a reward is released, And we want all the reward that God has put inside of him to come to us. Amen? All right. So when your first priority is not God, your last priority will always be people. Praise God. All right. Y'all can do what the online audience is doing, and you can have your seat. (laughs) What a treat to be here. Bella, I didn't know you wrote that song. That that, uh, light poured out? I want it. That's you? Mm. Come on now. Give God praise for that. I was sending clips. I was sending clips to baby James of the, the service. And then he said, you know, Bella wrote that song. I said, no, she didn't. But, I mean, praise God. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray. And I thank you for this time we have together. I just pray as we get into your word, you would help us truly. It's the entrance of your word that brings light and life. And I pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ will shine bright in here today. Lord, as always, may these your people be blessed by thee and not impressed by me. Now, Lord, would you think through this mind and speak through this mouth. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You're my strength and redeemer and every glad and happy heart. Say amen. amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou change us not. Thy compassions, they fail not. And as thou hast been, thou forever will will be. Y'all know the second word? Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in
Everybody together. Great is thy 40 years of faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus a round of applause. I am grateful for God's faithfulness to our church that is 40 years old and it has many sons and daughters, but I want to take this opportunity to honor the sons and daughters of this house, Pastor Mike and Julie Gowans, who have been faithful um, in this city, faithful uh, to expand the kingdom, faithful to expand the church. And if you've ever been ministered to for your marriage or deliverance or breakthrough or salvation, you know that they are marked by their faithfulness. I'm grateful to God for them and the faithfulness of their children. Can we give God a round of applause for our pastors? Thank you, God, for them. We do have a gift. We'll privately give you your gift uh, because it is not wrapped. And so... We have a gift for you, Pastor Mike and Julie, um, and uh, we're just grateful uh, for you, grateful for this church. Um, uh, Where's Tall, 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 Mike, TJ, were in our Activate program, in our home all the time. They went, they came down to Bethel Brentwood and made an impact. I know we imparted to them, but they imparted to us. And I just want you to know that you guys have some awesome young people here, and I'm just thankful for them. I thank you for the elders and staff that was here when he was talking about um, uh, e ENLI and, and the obedience to, or I'm gonna say the word submission to the leadership and the pastoring to know that God had a clue for his life of more. Uh, how would we all be better if we listen to the clues that our pastors drop um, to, to help us get to the next place? And so let his life when he was up here, be a testimony. If you haven't gone through that leadership development, don't think that it doesn't apply to you. It applies to all of us. I've gone through, my wife's gone through. That's how we got to where we are. And, and you may have counted yourself out. I hope you count yourself in. This is great. One more shout out, a little shout out to my wife who's here. Debbie, just wave at the people. We will celebrate 30 years of marriage this December. And praise God um, for that. I thank God for her and, and her life. Uh, now, one of the traditions at our church that uh, means I get to extend it here is that uh, during the month of August, we encourage our church to go out to dinner with other church members who are not of the same ethnicity or background or whatever. So if I challenged you guys to do that, would y'all do that for me? Well, let me see your hands if you would do that. Okay, so that, no, keep it up, keep them up until it burn a little bit. Uh, just, just, I just want you at some point in the next couple of weeks to make your invitation, put it down. Now, if, if I was paying for the meal, who would do it? All right, I saw your hand first. Come on up, my friend. I want you, come on. I want you to pick somebody in this congregation. And here's $100 for you to take them out. Your $100, you just pick, some, you just pick anybody you want. Who else would be faithful to do that? My sister, before I asked, you had your hand up, so come on. Come on up. Come on, now, you, you just pick somebody. Now, try to pick somebody that, that you don't know. Don't, don't pick your, your, your top friend or something like that. This is for us to do. All right, let's jump into the word. In this world, there's like this um, battle that's going on between some concepts. Do you have to believe in order to belong, or can you belong before you believe? These things are seemingly in conflict with one another. And, but when we come into this world with nothing, no clothes, 
no, that's what's funny. I mean, because that was funny. <laughs> you come in simply needing. And the thing you need is another person. You need their love. You need their interaction with you. And if you don't get it, science tells us that you will get unhealthy emotionally, physically. You will begin to wane. Even though this world is telling you, you don't need people and you don't need God. Subtly, that's being put into the DNA of our schools. It's being put into the DNA in the colleges. And everywhere you go, you don't need. In fact, there is AI that can be a better boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse to you than your spouse. Because you just put in your profile what you really like and they're always that for you. See, there's something about humanity that is rejecting human uh, interaction at an alarming rate. Nobody's going to the grocery store anymore. Your groceries come to your front door. Amazon live in my house. You don't even have to talk to the people. Just leave it, at the, just leave it on the door. And, you know, so this interaction with other humans and the need of it is just going down. We don't want to interact with other humans because it feels better to be alone because when you interact with other humans, the potential to be hurt is there. The potential to be misunderstood. If you ever been misunderstood, let me see your hand. The dog didn't misunderstand you. Your car didn't misunderstand you. Another human being that said they loved you misunderstood you. And the more we're misunderstood, we begin to put distance between us and other people. And the more distance we get, the more comfortable we get because it seems as if we're avoiding pain and we get comfortable with this idea that we can make it on our own. But when you're alone, you are dangerous. You're dangerous because you're not connected to other human beings who could correct you, who can encourage you, who can build you. And you're left alone with your crazy thoughts and being left alone with your crazy thoughts will have you do destructive things to other people when was that time when you start ignoring your need to belong i told you since you got here you had a need to belong but as you live here everything is telling you you are all right on your own when did that first enter in so for me i remember when it first entered in for me I was at camp, 12 years old, and it was right around that time. You know, it was the awkward season in my life. Anybody remember that awkward season? Just let me see your hands. I'm not alone up here. So you had one too? You know, when you didn't look quite right. You know, I walked knock-kneed, pigeon-toed. You might have been noticing it because I practiced so I wouldn't get teased. I practiced walking a little different. You know, it was at the time of my life where I didn't want to take my shirt off at the pool because it just looked like a big smiley face. I was round. It did. It just it didn't look right. It just looked like it didn't have any shape to it. It was just there. And and I, I went, and I was I was where parents send their kids to be humiliated camp. Cause I just know, like if you my mama should have said, baby, you don't look right to go to camp. But she sent me anyway, as if this camp was going to work it out. Yeah, she should have protected me from myself. And, and I'm, I'm at camp, and I'm sitting by myself because that's what I did. I wasn't popular enough to hang out. I didn't seek connectivity because connectivity wasn't the thing that people did with somebody like me in that season of my life. And... And the camp director, it was mealtime. I was sitting at the table by myself, as my, was my tradition. And the camp director said it was somebody's birthday. But he had the mic, and he was standing next to me. And I thought, well, it's my birthday. And they said, well, we ought to sing happy birthday. And they came out with a little ice cream and a, and a candle in the middle of the ice cream. And, you know, I was like, 
I was built up. I felt like the, I, they see me. I'm somebody I'm connected. And they started singing, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Baba. That, that's not my name. They don't even know my name. They're calling me the name that they came up with when they looked at me. I look like a Bubba. <laughs> hey, Bubba. Hey, Bubba. Hey, Bubba. And I realized... I did not belong. I did not fit in. And it was, oh, you know, and this is the time I made this declaration in my heart. If they don't want me, I don't need them. This is what happens when you let this spirit go undetected, unchecked in your life. You, you begin to build up this other fortification that says, you're not going to hurt me. And I don't need you. And then you allow yourself to build up other ideologies and other identifications with people who are strong and bold. And, and they may not think like you really think, but you give in to it because it makes you feel powerful. That's when I got into gang activity. That's when I started acting in deviant ways and devaluing other people because I did not solve my need to belong, my need to connect, not shallow, but deeply with other people. You know, deeply means I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to show you who I really am. I'm going to show you my wounds, my impediments, and the things that you really could use against me. I'm willing to show them to you so that I could be connected to you. This is something we want. So, you know, you hear the life group announcement. If you heard the life group announcement, don't raise your hand. If you heard the life group announcement, you say, well, I'm not doing that. Perhaps you've got to answer the question, why? Why are you avoiding people? Why? This is your, so how many years we've been doing this? This has been like 15 years, how, how, 16 years old? Yeah. How many years you gonna be here before you actually get connected? All right, good news for you is Jesus has done something to end this confusion and to answer the question about needing, believing, and belonging. Let's go to Ephesians chapter two. Let's start at verse 19. I'm going to, if it shows up on the screen, I'm going to have you read it together. Y'all have been tested and y'all are NIV positive because y'all use the NIV Bible around here. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I'm an ESV guy, but you must be an NIV guy. Just depends. Okay. Let's NIV it then. Let's read this together. I'm going to say ready and you guys read. Ready? Read. It's difficult to know what friends you belong to before you belong to Christ. It's difficult to know what family or what group of people that you belong to before you actually know Christ. I'm not talking about knowing him in some legalistic sense where there's just an exchange and you move from death to eternal life. 
because you can actually say yes to Christ and still be disconnected from people. I'm talking about when you know Christ fully and you know that he wanted to connect you to family with him and family with others. The, you, you, it's going to be impossible until you actually know the full love of God and the peace of God that passes all understanding until he, he, you, you understand that he saved you from your sin-sick condition until there's a deep appreciation for what God has brought you from and then what God has brought you to till you understand that he's blotted out all your transgressions and moved them as far as the east is from the west and he doesn't remember them anymore when he is giving you forgiveness for not just what you have done, but, but how you think. He has moved you from a position of being, being the object of his anger and wrath to the object of his love and affection until you realize that he didn't do it because there was anything good in you, but there was something good in him that when you were yet in sin, Christ died for you and, and he loved you. There's no real good good comprehensive reason for him to love you but but he who knew no sin became sin for you that you might be the righteousness of God oh how he loves you and me oh how he calls you brother and then he calls you friend and then he calls you son and then he gives you all of these amazing gifts and even David said return unto me the joy of my salvation until you understand how deeply connected you are to him you can never you can never know who you belong to or who you're supposed to be connected with knowing him is the key in the in the in the scripture says in the earlier verses that you need to remember this in 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 fact the bible says in in uh ephesians 2 and 8 he says he he says for by grace you've been saved through faith it's the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast for boast for you as his workmanship created in christ jesus uh for good works uh it's a gift you have to receive this relationship, this connectivity. The only part that you have to do with Christ is say yes. No matter how broken you are, no matter how stained you are, no matter how bad or dark your past is, all you have to do is say yes to Christ. And do you know that you can mentally know that you ought to do this and you can never really commit to doing it? You can sit here with the right information and still let the spirit of rejection keep you separated from Christ. You can come year after year after year. How do you know if you're in that pattern? If you still don't want to be connected with people, perhaps you haven't fully connected with Christ. I know that that might be strange for you to hear. If you're rejecting being connected with people, somehow your born again, your perceived born again experience haven't delivered you to belong. Because when you're connected to him, you're connected to them. That's the second thing the Bible says in, in the verses. He said, you know what he's done? He's done for you. He's torn down the wall that separates you from other people. You can't do it. Right now, there are gender wars going on. Let me, when I'm talking about gender wars, I'm not talking about nothing but a male and female gender war not the other war. That's gender confusion war going on. I'm talking about the gender war where men and women can't seem to get along. Men don't think like women. Women don't think like men, and no one wants to want to try to. And then these two people who dominate God's heart and dominate the planet and who God has given a great stewardship to, to work together to produce great things for God, like multiplying and filling the earth, that real harmony is the first thing that the enemy has come against to divide male from female. And then there's a wall put up to say they don't think like me. They don't, they don't act right. They're too emotional. They're, they're too strong. And, and all that wall is up. Jesus came to tear that wall down oh how I'm tired of this wall between Democrats and Republicans that 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 would what what you say baby you say you're not a Democrat or Republican you are what you a Bibliocrat <laughs> she a Bibliocrat because when somebody makes you only conservative when somebody makes you only liberal, only blue, only red, and no one is talking to you about, you know, this might shock you. There are some people who love Christ on both sides. 
and are committed to what he wants. But the problem is until Christ tears down the wall and makes his ideology and his word the standard, you're still going to be divided. That means no matter who wins in November, y'all don't like this. I'm going to stay here because I want to. No matter who wins in November, you will still have to be for Christ. And whatever wall came up that the world brought up, you will have to allow it to be torn down. He tears it down. You, you, you might, the people he's talking to in Ephesus hate each other. Let's just make it real plain. They hated each other. They were Jews, and then there were Gentiles. The Jews thought they had a birthright and that, every, that, that all the Gentiles that were born, they were just fuel for hell. The Jews didn't like the Gentiles to the degree that if you married, if you were a Jew and you married a Gentile, they would have a funeral for you. The Gentiles didn't like the Jews to the degree they thought that they were slaves, they could make them slaves, and they could abuse them. They were polarizing in polar opposites and constantly looking for reasons to fight each other. And yet Christ said when he came, he said, I died for both of you and I died to tear down the wall that separates you culturally, nationally, ethnically. I'm tearing down the whole thing. So anything that brings division between God's people and God's assignment is demonic. You cannot be more of this than you are Christ. That's it. And that settles it. And he tore down that wall. And he needs us to remember that. He needs us to remember that. And he needs us to know this. That if you're going to, when knowing him is the only thing that brings unity. I'm going to say it again over here. I like amens. <laughs> knowing him is the only thing that brings unity. Hey, I love y'all. I love the whole road. I love you. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's it. You have no other opportunity to have unity without Christ. That means there's no amount of conversation that you can have with somebody who's on the opposite side or something to you unless we involve Christ. You're not going to get them to figure it out. Just so nobody gets confused. There, no matter how you vote, there's a Christ has a way, and his way is the only one that's right. Just because he tore down the wall, he is not asking you to agree with things that are not from him. He's just basically saying there's no need for you to separate from people that he's trying to unite you with by tearing down what separates you. That means the longer you stay in Christ, the longer he has to solve the problem of basically sin, of basically wrong thinking and wrong behavior and wrong actions. It's what Christ does. Christ brings the unity. You do not. Christ brings the unity. You cannot. Now, the next part of the verse says, being built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. you got to be built. What are you built on? Are you built on anger? Are you built on frustration? Are you built on confusion? Are you built on pointing the finger? Are, are you, are, are you, is, is the foundation that you're there, I'm going to do this by my own pipe, might, my own power, my own strength, my own intellect, my own money. What and who are you built on? Because when you're a believer, the only person you can be built on is Christ. The early church, the first church, your life groups are not uh, Pastor Mike and Julie's idea. Life group is what they did in the early church, the first century church. They continued daily in the temple courts. They was at church all the time. And they were going house to house. And they were, ooh, Jesus. And they were going house to house. And they were breaking bread, doing communion. They were they continuing the apostles' doctrine. And they were praying what? Together. Together, together. That's what God's design is. What are you built on? The apostles, the, the, how many people know the apostles' creed in here? These apostles, the apostles' creed is 
not the same as the apostles' doctrine, they, but, but over the centuries, it was, it was culminated. And we're going to go through that in just a second. But God used these apostles. One of them was a zealot. One of them was a tax collector. Some of them was, was, was businessmen. Some of them was an accountant. But they were all different. And they didn't just automatically like each other. But God brought people together in him who wouldn't ordinarily be together. It's not your design. You know, church, especially a diverse church like this, is a miracle. It's a miracle. Why aren't all churches like this when, when your pastor last service says, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that the most segregated hour in the United States was 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning? That means no matter what we do together, we don't seem to be able to worship together. And I'm so glad that this church has decided that we can and we will worship together. Thank you so much for all, all you do. The apostles, built on the apostles, what did uh, Creed, the apostles' creed says this. Let's say Pat, let Pastor Mike lead us. I believe. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And now he sits on the right hand of God the Father from whence he should come to judge the living and the dead. That's the summation of it. Every prophecy of the Bible, every prophecy of Scripture is about him. And he said, what are you built on? What's making you grow? Well, the Bible says you have to desire the sincere milk of the word to grow. You grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus you're transformed the more you look to Jesus. What are you learning? What, what, what's on your feed? What are you putting on the inside of you? When you think about your FaceTime, if we put your FaceTime, not your, your, your screen time, if we put your screen time up on the screen, and I'm not coming after social media, but I am asking you what dominates your life. And if you have more time toward your Insta page, your ticky tocky and all that stuff, and, you, and your Bible app is saying 1%, probably you need to change something because you're not being built to grow. You're just happy that you know, but you're not not growing, and you need to grow. How do you grow? Well, Let's just take it back. The first thing when we came to Bethel, Debbie, Debbie and I, we, we came in and it was a diverse church and Pastor Rice was leading and we hadn't seen anything like, like that. The first thing they, they did, and it's what we do here, is we check the foundation. We call it the holy pat down. Somebody got to, you guys, yes, hold your arms out. Let's check you out. Are you submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Were you baptized in his name? Will you fill with his spirit? Somebody's got to give you the holy pat down. And then you've got to, in order to grow, guess what? You need people. The Bible says he equipped you, the, the pastors are to equip the saints for the work of ministry. You know what I'm saying? So we had to get in a life group. And we, you know, I just want to tell you, I'm coming from Detroit. You don't let nobody in your house. They'll rob you. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that. When they say life group, I, I used to say, yeah, you know, we're not doing that. People not coming in our house like that, learning what we have. <laughs> but it's all kinds of, but you know, you need other humans to grow. You need, say amen every now and then. Yeah, thank you. You need other humans to grow. The message is about connectivity and belonging. So those are the signals. When you, anything about connectivity, and belonging, you, say, you just say amen, yes. So we had to, we, we, we got in a life group, and guess what? And I remember the first time we went to Pastor Tim Johnson's life group, he had kind of invited us, and I, was, and I was averse to it. My wife was sitting there. She was learning. I was like, I'm going to hang out in the kitchen with the food. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not going in there. Remember, I already knew God, but I chose not to grow according to his system. 
I just wanted to do it my way because I'm still protecting myself. I'm still keeping myself insulated because the closer you get to people, they have the potential to hurt you. So I'm going to do as much as I have control over, but I'm not going to do enough for them to have control in my life. And I, he started breaking through to me. And I went from not wanting to be in a life group to then learning getting trained and then coming to VIP meetings and then learning to lead a life group. And then I led eight life groups. And then me and my wife went through ENLI. And then we, we, st we started doing outreaches. And then we came part-time on, on, on staff. And, and then we, we, we started reaching out our high schools and our, and, our, and our college campuses. And then we started going on global missions. Then we started participating in, in, in planting churches. Then we were invited to reach it. See, it's, it all starts in the same place with all of us. Nobody is unique, but if you're counting yourself out and you're saying that's just what Mike and Julie does, that's just what the pastors of the church uh, do, that's what the, the pastor's kids do, that's what Pastor James does. No, it's what you, I was you, sitting in the pew saying I need to grow. So how do you maintain uh, unity? You, you maintain it by growing. This is how you do it. But each of you has an assignment. Each of you has some level of a responsibility. You know, I was, uh, uh, I, I grew up, uh, Pastor Mike, if you didn't know, I grew up a little Lutheran. Any, any Lutherans in the house? Just a, don't be ashamed. Missouri Synod over here, you know. See, yeah, hallelujah, see. <laughs> and I knew the Apostles' Creed because it was put in me by other humans. Sometimes you just got to show up, even when you feel disconnected, and it will help you grow with someone instead of growing alone. But something unique happened in the 17th verse, even though we've been reading verse 19 and uh, 20, 21, and 22. Something unique happened. Go ahead to that uh, 17th verse. And we have, read, read that for me. Ready? Read. He preached be before, 19 says, consequently, we're no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. But verse 17 says, in order for us to know him, someone had to go and preach to us. So before they can know, someone has to go. And once you know, then you can grow. You have to go. He said they went and preach to those who were near and those who were far. Those who felt like they had the right to Christ and those who weren't even thinking about the Messiah. All of those needed. Let's just make it in practical terms. There are people in here who need the preaching done to them. They need the good news of the gospel still preached to them. They're in your family. They're near to you. They're uh, in this church. They're near to you. They're your close friends. Uh, who haven't said yes to Jesus yet, they're near to you. And you've got to preach the gospel to them. And that's why the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those who, who, who preach the good news. The Bible says how can you hear without a preacher, and how can he preach to you except he be sent to you? You, 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 you need the preacher. And God also in 1 Corinthians says he is chosen through the foolishness of preaching to save. It's something about proclaiming the good news of who Christ is and what Christ does that causes people to translate out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light where they're not disconnected, but they're connected and they belong. And then they start believing everything that Christ is all about. Those who are near. What about those who are far? Those who are so far away that what you can't do to people who are far, let's just take all this gender confusion that's going on. Let's talk the uh, sexual confusion that's going on. You can't say to the people that are so far away, we don't want nothing to do with them. I don't want them around me. I don't want them around my kids. I don't want them in my life. Because Christ came far to get us. Christ left the comfort of heaven where he was worshiping the door and he descended to men of low degree that he might rescue you. You weren't looking for him. 
You didn't like him. You actually hated him. But he still loved you. See, when we don't take the gospel, when we only take it to people who's near, they kind of look like they're open. You know how it is when you, you want to witness to somebody, they look like they're open, so you say something to them. But then there are people who look completely closed. And they, they look, look like they don't want you because Paul didn't look like he was available for the gospel. Agrippa and the king that Paul was preaching, he didn't look like he was available for the gospel. But he preached it to him anyway. You've got to preach the good news. You know what the number one fear in the world is today? There is fear of public speaking. You know the number one tool that God uses to get people saved? Preach public speaking. <laughs> You're going to have to overcome your number one fear in order to obey God and do the work of God. God wants you to preach. God wants you to preach to those who are near and those who are far. And you know what you'll get? You'll get a church like this. This church shouldn't just be filled with people who, who kind of like God, who are a little close. We want the people coming from all corners who are confused, who are sheep without a shepherd, who need healing, who are a little bit deranged. We need the up and out, those people who are trusting in their money and trusting in their wealth and trusting in their intellect. We need pure lost people, but we will never have the lost coming in here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday until you go. They won't know. They won't know. This is what we are sent here to do. The Bible calls it the ministry of reconciliation. The Bible says when you go, you're not representing your ethnicity. You're not representing your political platform. You're not representing your, your, your gender. You're not, you're not representing your ideology. You, when you go, you're representing one person, and his name is Jesus Christ. You, and you say of yourself what Christ said of himself. I only do what I see the Father doing, and I only say what I hear the Father saying. And, and you offer to others what was offered to you. Freely you have received, freely you give the good news. And so that they can desire to send silver milk of the word, that they might grow. What am I begging you to do? To not forget what your assignment is. To not forget that he brought you from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. He gave you a diverse church so you can know that he wants to reach all people, the ones who are near and the ones who are far. Amen. What do we do to continue this legacy? Preach the gospel. What do we do to, to, to build right? We, we build on the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. We need to know him, and when you know him, you worship him. When you know him, you, you, you just lift him up. So I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you this way. It's, this, is, this is how you know, encur I encourage you this. God wants to use you right where you are. But it's going to be difficult for you to do it if you're truly not connected to him. It's going to be difficult for you to do it if you haven't taken in the joy of him tearing down the walls that separate. It's going to be difficult for you to do it if you're built on your past and your disappointments and your hurt and your anger and everything else instead of being built on what the apostles and the prophets were built on instead of being built on love. It's going to be difficult to do it if you want to stay in the comfort of your own life in, your, in your, your own home, and you just want to be comforted by AI, and you want to take this narrative, you want to take this narrative of the world that says you can make it on your own, and when you leave church today, you're not looking to connect with any other humans. You just want to go eat by yourself, and you want to go and veg out on your, on your Sunday on some type of show or some type of thing, but it's not about human connectivity. It's not about going to the near. It's not about going to the far. It's about just insulating yourself and protecting yourself and having your own life, and I'm here to tell you God has greater things for you. Greater things for you. This church needs to still be going to its third service, its fourth service, because you guys have the stuff that the kingdom is built on. You have the heart of God. Lord, I just pray for those who are in the room today and pray that you would bless us to think more like you, to speak more like you, to love more like you, to be more like you. God, I'm asking for your supernatural transformational power to take those who are stuck in darkness and bring them to your light. Those who are stuck on what makes them comfortable instead of being stuck on what makes you happy and what makes you move. Lord, I'm praying that those that are out of fellowship with you, 
would receive the miracle of being in fellowship with you. Those who still have barriers between them and other people, God, that you would tear down those barriers between them and other people. And those who need a renewed mind would get a renewed mind. Those who need a healed body would get a healed body. Those who need to get filled with your spirit would get filled with your spirit. Because those who need to be reconciled above everything else, you would reconcile. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. What has the Holy Spirit spoken you, to you today? To those that are watching online as well, what, what did God speak to you? What I love about God and I love about church, I love about preaching when it's led by the Spirit is that God has the ability through a message to speak to all of us as diverse as this room is that one message by the spirit can speak to every individual in the room countless times I I cannot keep track of all of the times people come up to me after preaching and said, Pastor, how did you know? Like you wrote that sermon just for me. And I'm like, sure. (laughs) Because the word is alive. The spirit of God moves through his word, through his servant. God brings so many revelations to us through one one service. When his presence is manifest, he's so close. So what has God spoken to you today? How do you need to respond? Before we stand and respond in worship and get heaven's power to help us be transformed and live out that which he's calling us to, what is it he's calling you to? How did he speak to you today? We don't come to just have a mental ascent or a mental encounter. We've come to encounter him relationally with our hearts. So can we take just a moment just to bow your head, close your eyes, and just, what has he spoken? I know you received an impartation. But what's the next step? Is there a wall that it was identified that you've you got to let him tear down? A wall of those who are near to you? A spouse? a sibling, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor. And are there walls keeping you from reaching those that are far because of past experiences and hurts or things that were said by others things you watched on the news. What is the Holy Spirit speaking? Will you let him tear down those walls? Let him 
reset your heart today. You're here and you'd say, I, I got some walls. Today, making a decision to let God tear those walls down. Would you just lift up your hand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the word that has come to your servant, Lord, to us. Church, let's just pray this together. Say, Jesus, I need your help to tear down the walls. Thank you, Jesus, for tearing down the wall between me and God. And today, I receive your love and your forgiveness. Jesus, remove the walls that I have built today. I come out of agreement with these walls. Tear them down in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Come on, let's give them a shout. Come on. Remember Jericho, remember Joshua, the shout that tore down the walls. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's respond in worship as free people who don't have built walls, who live brave lives, amen, who reach those who are near and who are far, amen. Let's worship him.
Christ and revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival. so much for joining us for service today. Excited to have you. And remember, you matter to us and you matter to God. And because you matter to us, we want to connect with you. So please be sure to fill out a connect card and let us know how we can be praying for you this week. And we'll see you here next week.
we must be convinced that He is near. We must be convinced that He is good. What if the most effective thing that you can do to deal with what's going on out there in the world is to sit with God? If you would like to give, we invite you to give through the Bethel app, available through your app store. Whether new to Bethel or one of our members, we want you to know that we are all about relationship. So, connect with us. Press connect and let us know how you're doing. And if you need prayer, well, we can pray for you. Press pray with us and one of our ministry staff will take on your prayer request. Digitally challenged? Well, don't worry. We have gift envelopes and connect cards located in the seat back in front of you. And if you are connecting with us online, simply download the Bethel app or visit our website at www.bethelchandler.com. To find out more about what's happening here at Bethel, register for events, or listen to the latest sermon, download the Bethel app, or visit our website at www.bethelchandler.com.